Welcome, welcome to the WCTV Game of the Week. We are on the campus of Summit High School tonight, where tonight the Summit Spartans host the newly named Franklin Admirals. We'll try to do our best tonight to not say Rebels too much, even though I was a Franklin Rebel back in the day. We'll try to call them the Admirals tonight, as is their new nickname. And as sometimes with me, Paul Brees tonight. And Paul, I got to tell you, buddy, I have been excited about this one all week. Tell the folks why that is. That's a great question, Michael Williams. <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> That's a, why are you excited, Michael Williams? I don't know. We get to see the Keaton see. And, or the Dustin <laughs> Wade again tonight. Destin Wade. I was going to say, if you want to find Keaton, he's, uh, <laughs> he's on, on the, the sideline. Line. Yeah. So we kick it away. The Rebs receive, or I'm sorry, first mistake tonight. <laughs> the Admirals receive tonight, number 22. That is Mitch Lanick. Mitch Lanick on the return. <laughs> sorry, once again, got my rosters mixed up as we. I, you know what? While we're talking about it, though, take off. The lighting up here is fantabulous. <laughs> I mean, I can see the rosters clear as day. Uh, so we're excited. I love the uniforms. Everybody's number is crystal clear. So let, we're looking right here at the Franklin offense with uh, senior Connor Bevan, uh, Merritt Scholar athlete. I think he scored a 35 on his ACT <laughs> recently. That's solid. So the Admirals start off first and 10 from their own 21 yard line. Give to the outside there, makes it up to just inside the 25. <clears throat> Give us a second to get our numbers. Well, that's gonna be Bright, out here. Bryce Sparks, the running back. And, and the key for the Rebels right here, the front five. Okay, uh, those guys are uh, pretty big up front for a, uh, a high school team with uh, Fisher Anderson, the left tackle, being courted by uh, a few D1 schools. Better now with uh, three receivers to his left, under pressure, finds the opening man, open man down the middle. Number 15 on the catch, so that's Taylor Spirto, the senior. Spirito up to the 45 yard line for a big first down for the Franklin Admirals. Well, Connor Bevin's uh, favorite receiver, Connor Repass, uh, was covered up that time, so he checked down to uh, Taylor Spirito. And Spirito, uh, sure handed receiver. You get it near him, he's going to catch it. Probably not going to outrun you, but he's a great possession receiver. For pass, he goes in motion on the left side. They give it to Bryce Sparks again, and Sparks will. Will make his way up close to the 50 yard line, a gain of, of about four yards. So here we are, Michael Williams. Look at this. See how crystal clear we are? A lot of light up here. Caesar. In our Friday night finest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you talk about Fisher Anderson up front, 6'7, 275. Mason Jones, 6'6, 280. The Rebel yeah. offensive line making. At Admiral, for itself. Admiral, the offense Admiral is sure. offensive line. We're going to be doing that to each other all yep, night long. Absolutely. I promise you. Then That's across the middle to give or the reception made by Spirito, and he's up to the 40-yard line. We saw these Spartans a couple of weeks ago, and right now, kind of on their heels defensively, they come into the game with a record of three and zero. Oh, we saw them the first <coughs> week against Indy in a barn burner. They. Spartans able to pull out the win in the last 11 seconds of the game. Franklin comes into the game with a record of one and two. This is a non-region game. The Spartans at 5A, the Rebs, the Admirals at 6A. Bevin again under pressure, flushed out of the pocket. This time he'll have to chuck it out of bounds. The Spartan coaches want the flag on the grounding and they will get it, looks like. Well. And, and listen, Connor Bevin, smart guy, right? We talked about national merit, semifinalist or finalist, whatever they call it now. <laughs> but here's what I do know. Connor Bevin did the smart thing right there on that, um, that possession. They rolled out and he tried to get the ball rid of it because he didn't want to take the sack. Unfortunately, when you have to get rid of it, you got to at least throw it to the marker. And he just couldn't get it there. So the intentional grounding was called. And that is a uh, situation that uh, Donnie Webb and the one and two admirals cannot put themselves in. <laughs> You know, you're, you're going to notice this, Michael Williams. The Admirals, one of the few teams that I, I can, that I've been watching, uh, still huddle up. 
Well, they have to huddle up way back at the 45-yard line <laughs> for the second down. They've got to make it all the way up to the Spartan 30 now for a first down. So that the intentional grounding call backs them way up. Bevan now with three receivers to his left. Finds Spirito again across the middle. And Spirito with a nice gain up into Spartan territory to the 45-yard line. About six yards shy of the first down. So a nice pickup after the big penalty. So they'll call that a 21-yard pickup up to the Spartan 40, 35, excuse me. Spartans coming into the game ranked second in the state in 5A. Again, three wins on their record, including the big win three weeks ago against Independence just up the road. We'd love to get another win over another 6A county rival. Third down and six now for Bevan and company to give inside again to Sparks, and Sparks finds a little bit of daylight, still on his feet, and finally spun down at the 25-yard line. And looks like it'll be plenty enough for the first down, so no harm, no foul on the giant penalty on the grounding calls. Franklin back in business at the Spartan 25. Well, I'll tell you what, Michael Williams, to be in a second and what <laughs> country mile? Second and 26, I think it was. And it took two plays to get it? Congratulations to the Admiral offense right there. Good play calling. Bevan again fakes the inside give. This time out to his receiver. That is Carson Gardner, number eight, I believe, if I can see that correctly. And Gardner. Yep. Great Another first down for the Admirals. Well, it's a great job by uh, Bevan right there, the quarterback, to uh, hold the fake out and then just toss it out to Gardner. And uh, Gardner did a little uh, one-two on the fake right there and picked up the uh, first down. So Franklin inside the 15-yard line. They can have to get to about the one for a first down. <clears throat> Admiral spread out again. They give, they give to Sparks inside and nothing doing this time as that Spartan defensive front caves in on that right side and able to stop Sparks for no gain. Well, that was 40, Jesse uh, Bre Breimeyer on the tackle right there. It's a nice job of, you know, shed his blocker and uh, make the play on the D line, putting the Admirals in a second and 12 situation. So second down and 12. Just underway here at Summit High School as the sun begins to set on this beautiful campus in the southern part of the county. Second down 12, again the give inside to Sparks. Sparks is able to gain maybe a couple. And Franklin now fi facing the third down. Bryce Sparks, a junior, 6'2", 185. I, you know, I see big things from this young man the next uh, year and a half of his high school playing career. So third down and seven now. Admiral spread out, three receivers spread long to the right side. Bevan, he'll roll to his right, fire to his right, and pass is broken up, incomplete, intended for Taylor Spirto. The Admirals have a decision to make here, and it was pretty quick as Coach Donnie Webb will march his field goal unit on the field. 27-yard try, it looks like. Take his. Yeah, they're going to mark it at the um, yeah 17, so 27. Michael Williams, let's get a. Kicker is number 47. A.J. Elliott looks like. So A.J.'s kick goes straight and true, and the about said it again. The Admirals are on the board first, three to nothing, 6:14 to go here in the first quarter. Well, I think that is a win for the Admirals, getting points on the board and not stalling out. As uh, last week against Ravenwood, they had a couple of. Uh, situations where they, you know, either turn over or, or their drive stalled out. Nice job by Coach Donnie Webb right there, 
to get points on the board, on the road. Maybe to get it's a non-region game, but I tell you what, don't undersell on these Franklin Rebels. You know, if, if, if you're in the uh, stock market game, go ahead and buy the Rebels <laughs> now. That's selling. Go long on the rib. Yeah. On the Admirals. Yeah. <laughs> the Admirals are definitely, yeah, for sure. We're going to have to tattoo that across our foreheads. Well, Donnie Webb mentioned in the coaches' show, listen, he's tired of being in that fourth spot, uh, fighting for that fourth playoff spot. He wants to be uh, moving up the ladder into that 3-2-1 spot even, uh, you know, where he can get a better draw in the playoffs to where he doesn't have to go on the road against a, a number one seed from the uh, – on a, uh, from another region to start out the playoffs. Franklin starts the year off with a big win against Siegel High School out of Murfreesboro. Had a, a letdown, a, well, not, I wouldn't call it a letdown, but against Riverdale the next week. Bevan throws for over 300 yards in a 30 to 25 loss. And then last weekend against Ravenwood, the Raptors, kind of the, uh, the preseason pre favorite. The crown jewel of <laughs> Williamson County football. You'll, you guys will have uh, the Battle of the Woods next uh, Friday against Ravenwood and Brentwood. Well, I think Ravenwood is, you know, with the situation with this pandemic, has not shied away from opponents as Pulaski Academy has come back to Ravenwood High School to play. They ha then play Brentwood the next week, and then after that they play IMG Academy from Brentonton, Florida, uh, perennial power, like one of the schools that is on ESPN on Saturday, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, playing uh, Saturday afternoon games. One uh, of those schools. Yes. In so fact, IMG Academy actually hosted the WNBA bubble season this this year. So it's not just some <laughs> ragtag situation here. But here we go. King and Kerouac back to receive. I believe that was, I want to say that was Brandon King. Actually, that was Sam Kerouac, number 20, on the return. Well, we'll Check see it right here. Ball. Listen, I thought it was number 10, Brandon King. He saw a little glimpse, great block. The, the wedge kind of does its job. He gets to the next level, and King just hangs on. And a nice tackle uh, by the Rebels right there with Nick Gacka, number 26. So inside the give again is to, I believe that is King number, or Sam Kerouac number 20 makes it up to close to the 45 yard line. Destin Wade, the junior, has a twin brother, Keaton Wade. Keaton won't be playing tonight. I think he's got a, a rolled up ankle that he's kind of been nursing for the last couple of weeks. So he's in a boot on the sideline. But his brother, Destin, is probably one of the better quarterbacks that we'll see this year on the WCTV game of the week. Destin responsible for all six touchdowns three weeks ago against Indy, four passing, two rushing, and he is one of the best talents that you'll see in the county. Wade this time, the reception made. Switzer outside, and that's enough for the first down as the Spartans cross midfield into Admiral territory. Well, some of the people I was talking to before the game did not realize Destin Wade was not going to play. And I said, uh, I'm sorry, Keaton Wade was not going to play. I said, it doesn't worry about it. There's only one football out there. Destin Wade's going to have his hands on the ball 100% uh, of the time on offense. Wade this time to give inside and runs into a pile of people. But another nice pickup on first down as Brandon King takes it close to the 45-yard line. Call it a pickup of four five yards, brings up second down and five. 440 to go here in the first quarter. Well, Admiral's Brent, on top 3-0 if you're just joining us. Brandon King is making a household name of himself down here at Summit High School with this, uh, you know, he, he, he had a tremendous opening game against Independence and uh, I think the uh, Spartans have definitely relied on him heavily as this is where <laughs> Mr. Wade gets very, very dangerous. Well, so Wade in trouble, able to turn nothing into something, and a big something at that, as he's able to dance his way outside and make it all the way up to the 15-yard line. A gain of about 30 yards. 
and that's where he yeah. is so, so dangerous. Yeah, but see, he's trying to go through his progression, and he finally says, you know what? It's breaking down. All I got to do is, you know, make one cut here, one cut there, and a host of admirals trying to take him down. So just inside the 15, call it the 14-yard line. They check this, check out of the play as the coaches signal into their players. Thought it might be a procedure call there as somebody wasn't set, but nevertheless, 20 is Sam Kerouac up close to the five yard line and close to another Spartan first down. The Spartan offense can hit you in a number of ways. I was gonna say, Destin Wade to me reminded me, and I take this for what it's worth, reminded me of a, of a young Cameron Newton <laughs> a few weeks ago. Very good, very Thank good. You. He's certainly got the size, he's got the arm. Yeah. Fires into the end zone, got wow. his receiver, and that's a touchdown to Caleb Jolly on the six yard reception. You see right there Wade's patience as he looked across the middle and found Jolly just across the end zone. And that's the Spartans' first score of the night, and they'll go ahead and take the six to three lead. Beautiful throw and catch. Ryan Crane, the 11th grader, on for the try. And straight and true, so the Spartans will take the seven to three lead, 3-10 to go in the first quarter. Well, we'll see it right here, Destin Wade. Just gonna sit back, again, progression one, check one, check two, look around, and freezes the linebackers because just the chance of him taking off and running is a scary situation for a defender. And Caleb Jolly, who I was about to ask you, Michael Williams, has there been a Caleb Jolly sighting? He's a big part of this uh, Spartan team. And sure enough, he sneaks on the backside of the linebackers right there for the touchdown for the Spartans. Very nicely done. You see why now, just in those few plays, why Destin Wade is on a lot of radars for a number of big time programs throughout the country. Not exactly sure who's courting him. Well, here, here's what I do know. You know, we've talked about it in week one against Independence. This young man is trying to prove himself as a quarterback. That's what he wants to go play in college. Obviously, you can be swayed to play and change positions, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if there's any possible way that a Destin Wade can find a home at a big time D1 quarterback spot, I am sure he will be the first one to sign his name and whoever gives him that opportunity. And obviously with his brother as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you get a two for one. <laughs> your package deal on that yeah. one. So kick is away this time. The Admirals will take it just outside the 15 yard line. Couldn't quite see who the ball carrier was. It's 42, 42. Tell me out there, Coach Breeze. Well, well, Switzer, I know, was on the tackle, but 42 we'll here. On our glasses. Yeah, we're both of us now. Ashton Orton. Ashton Orton. I got glasses. I got binoculars up here. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got Paul Priest to correct me every time I'm wrong, which will be a number of times tonight. As I feel like uh, we're, we're, we're not at quite yet at midseason uh, stride, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we're, we're getting there, right? <laughs> so the Admirals, I'm getting, I think I'm getting better at that. Just outside the 30 yard line, first down and 10 as we approach three minutes to go here in the first. Pass out of the clutches of number 22, that is Mitch Lanick. Yeah, that was a tremendous uh, throw by the Bevan right there, the quarterback hits Lanick. And uh, just bounces off to him. Very fortunate the ball deflected downward instead of popping up as the Spartan defenders could have probably easily uh, snagged that and uh, that could have been a disastrous turn of events as Franklin has had, you know, had success in that first drive. So second and 10 after the incomplete 
pass. Bevin again, he'll roll to his right this time. Spirito out. Spirito have been pretty clutch on the catches tonight. He's up and he's past the first down marker. Put the ball up at around the 44 yard line and that will be plenty enough for the first down. Well again, it is. It is. looks like Connor Bevin is definitely zeroed in on Taylor Spirito. It was kind of a good check down option as uh, Connor repass number three on the far side of the field has is, is been kind of uh, Bevin's number one target. Right, but yet we have uh, yet to see him go his way. So Bevin checks his plate, has three receivers to his left to give his inside this time again to Bryce Sparks. And this time the Spartan defensive front snuffs him out at about the 41, so maybe a loss on the play of a couple of yards. Senior night here at Summit High School. They recognized the senior members of the football team, the cheerleading squad, and the band members. Hard to believe that we are in our fifth week of school already. So they'll call it second down and 10 now. Again, three receivers to the left. Bevin moves a receiver out and goes across the middle. And I think we had a yeah. miscommunication right there as well, number eight. That was Carson Garner, the big tight end. He was. I'll be honest with you. I saw the whole play develop, Michael Williams. <laughs> Carson Garner, the tight end, released off the line and was being held with one arm uh, on the back of his jersey because he released free and, and uh, did not get that um, call from the back judge that he should have. So, uh, that you know, it's unfortunate. But here we go, the Admiral's third and 10. Well, I thought, well, seeing how you called it, I was thinking that he was fussing at his quarterback there, but no, he was held off the line there. He was fussing at the receiver. <laughs> Bevin again in bad trouble. This time he'll be taken down and sacked all the way back to the 25 yard line. That is number four. I believe that is also the running back is Trey Hunter, who plays running back. He was recognized earlier, the big senior has a massive sack here and puts Franklin all the way back to the 31 yard line. That's where they'll call the initial point of contact. And that'll bring up a fourth down and 20. Well, that was a deficit that uh, Franklin could not get out of that time with the sack by Hunter, who was a big uh, defensive player in our first game one of our WCTV game. Oh, tremendous punt, by the way. Switzer back to receive, and that will take a neither nor bounce and then finally roll into Spartan territory just inside the 35 yard line. 18 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Well, this is going to be a huge stop um, for a stand for Franklin. This series, I mean, they have to. <laughs> They're going to have to stop the Spartans right here and get a, uh, a change of possession. Or, you know, if the Spartans go down here and store it, it, it's starting to get it to be a long night. But I digress. As Franklin did get behind against Ravenwood last week, kind of a similar situation and came back. So first and 10 and the give inside and nothing doing this time as Franklin sniffs out the running play. Brian Coleman, the coach for Summit, Again, remember they, you know, they went to the state championship game last year, and uh, he is, uh, <laughs> he he has to be excited to know that Destin Wade, hey, you're only a junior, come on back for another okay. year after this. <laughs> what a luxury! So no, uh, no chance for the uh, taking off after the junior year in in high school. But <laughs> so that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter with the. Summit Spartans leading the newly named Franklin Admirals, seven to three. In this week four of high school football here in Williamson County. Hope you can join us next week for the big battle of the woods between Ravenwood and Brentwood. Paul Brees and Parker Hazard on that call. All right, that's, that's gonna be an exciting game. For sure. That was probably 
I was at that game last year at Brentwood and probably one of the more exciting games that I saw, the WCT game of the week that last year at that time was Franklin in Indy that you and Parker did and that one I think went to uh, overtime. There you see the newly named Admirals as they come out, come back out on the field to start this second quarter. Well, if we have to, uh, and listen, I'm a big fan of the gray, the gray pants, the, the, the whole, the whole uniform color, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, growing up, it was, I picked teams based upon how cool their uniform looked. Of course. And uh, because, Why else would you do that? Well, we, you know, we didn't have an NFL team around here. My, right. So the NFL team I chose was the Minnesota Vikings when I was okay. a little kid. So uh, I don't know. There was something about that, the Viking uh, <laughs> emblem on the helmet and uh, the purple and uh, gold and white. It just uh, just stuck with you. Stuck just, with it me. It just spoke spoke to you yeah, absolutely so uh, had some <laughs> it was tough to cheer though uh, not very good <laughs> but uh, they did play in a couple of Super Bowls in the 70s I yeah 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 well, the, you're, the, you, well, okay let's just say this they still have not won a Super Bowl <laughs> I think they went to four and I think they're 0 and four so the other um, NFL team did not win a Super Bowl uh, I believe Buffalo Bills as as well I believe uh, no, you know what? Oh, man, I don't know. You know what? May have to do a little research. Are you going to? After four. Are you going to the phone? You're going to the phone. I I, you know, it. I got to phone a friend, right? His name is Google. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Google. So second down and 10 now for the Spartans just inside their own 35-yard line. Wade again, looking across the middle, and this one oh. nearly picked off. The pass intended for number 13. As I have to go for my glasses again. Uh, that was number 12. As I'm, <laughs> I, was looking for, I was looking for them hanging from my shirt, and I'm holding it in my hand. Graham Schneider, number 12, the intended receiver. Oh, I'm sorry. The defender was number 12. You, you, you may have been at the oh, Okay. All right. I apologize. That was Blake, Blake Irby, the cornerback, uh, almost with the we'll pick. Get it right. Plenty Way of time. Back to pass. Goes deep this time. Is it enough? And that one will be picked off. Tremendous. Fantastic interception. Wow. Couldn't tell exactly who that the number was, was. That was 26, Nick Gacka. Nick Gacka the, on the interception. I the, remember Gacka. The junior, I mean, played it. Hey, he was he was a step. He got step by, behind on the receiver. The receiver had him right here. We'll see Wade right here. Continues to hold it. Continues to hold it. Plenty of time. Giving a credit to the Spartans O line right there. Doesn't quite get the step into it, but man, heaves it down and Gacka tremendous. Gets it at the top, the peak of the uh, throw there. Brings it down, and all of a sudden, a uh, flow of adrenaline after the pick. And Gacka may want to talk to Taylor Spirito right there. Spirito didn't block anybody. Come on, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> so first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Uh-oh. Is this going back after it? Going, going back down to the right side, and this one no. knocked away at the last second. And here comes a flag. Oh, the Spartan crowd does not like that. It's, looks like we're going to be whistled for pass interference. Wow. I'll tell you what, Michael Williams, uh, you know, one way or another, they look like their feet just got tangled up, and that was the shot that Bevin was looking for with Connor repass, the deep threat for Franklin. As you see it right here, step, step, throw, and Bevin into double coverage, probably not the greatest idea, and it just looked like the feet got tangled up, and repass did a tremendous job of uh, selling it. And you know what? That's part of the coaching, right? If a receiver goes down, hey, make it look like they pulled you down. Well, the Spartan parents here in the bleacher section don't care for the call very much, but nevertheless, they'll have to contend with it as Franklin now has the ball at the 50-yard line and a first down. Bevin again, three receivers right. Rolls to his right. Looking, firing, and ball is sails out of bounds, incomplete. 
Well, this is an interesting situation, Michael Williams. Is uh, you know, co Coach Donnie Webb probably hasn't had a quarterback like uh, Bevan, um, you know, with the with quite the arm strength. This somebody uh, similar to like a Joe Critchlow back in the back a few years ago. So it's just interesting to see that Franklin throwing on first down, you know, and and, and instead of normally they would be trying to run it, shorten that second and third down play call. So second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Sparks again, takes off to his right side, finds a little bit of daylight, and he'll be spun down just inside the 40 yard line, a big pickup on first down, on second down rather. And the Admirals well, have I, the first down. I tell you what, maybe that just, uh, <laughs> that will shut me up, right? I, as I just get on to uh, the Admirals for throwing on first down, uh, you know what? Hand it off to Bryce Sparks. He'll get the first down. Don't you worry about it. Sparks, we have saw him a couple of times last year and showed a couple of moments of brilliance, and this year looks like he's earned his spot in the backfield for the Admirals. So first down and 10 just inside the 40 at the Spartan 39-yard line. This give inside. Wow. I think it's Ashton Orton. He's more of a, uh, I would call him a fullback guy. <laughs> 42 for the Admirals. Uh, he's going to take it between the tackles for sure. Yeah. As, uh... So Ashton Orton, the 11th grader, picks up a couple of yards on foot, first down, brings up second down and eight. Spot the ball at about the 37 yard line between the 37 and the 36. Uh -oh. Bevin again Trey under pressure, under pressure, and this time has to throw it away. And again, here comes the flag, and Bevin once again slow to get up. And the flag comes out, and I believe we'll have another grounding. You know, an interesting situation right there, Michael Weaves. It looked like to me that Bevin was kind of setting up a, a screen play, but uh, the running back, Bryce Sparks, did not go out <laughs> in the pattern of a screen play. He was staying back block, trying to help block. So I'm not sure if there's some confusion right there. Bevin, of course, had to chunk it away, but did not again make it as there was no receiver in that area at the time. So, so the intentional grounding will back Franklin back up into their own territory to about the 47-yard line. They've got to get to the 30 of Summit now for a first down, third down, and they'll call it 20, 28 on the scoreboard. But don't sell out on Franklin here because they've been known to pick it up, especially with oh, this young man's him. arm. Oh. And just out of the outstretched arms of the intended receiver. Carson Re repass. Repass the intended receiver. Would have been a spectacular catch. But it was in the ballpark. But nevertheless, the Admirals will have to punt it away. Number nine, Zach Switzer. Puts his toes at about the 20 yard line, set to receive the kick. As the Spartans able to hold on that third down, especially after that big penalty. Oh, kick is away, almost. Hunter almost got that one. And again, a neither you nor we bounce. <laughs> or or me bounce, goes straight up and ball is spotted at the 30 yard line. Well, the Spartans will take over first and 10. 9.48 to go here in the second quarter. Spartans leading, it is 9.48. Spartans leading seven to three. Here on the WCTV game of the week. Hope you are tuning in on live stream on YouTube or Facebook. Had a nice audience the past couple of weeks. Really appreciate that. First down and 10 inside the give. So number 20, that's Sam Kerouac. And Kerouac will be spun down as he crosses the 35-yard line. And they'll spot it right on the 35. So a pickup of five yards on the play.
Wade again, thought he might keep his blockers in to pass protect, but the give is inside this time to Brandon King. And King will take it up to about the 37 yard line, maybe a pickup of two. Well, a crucial third down right here, Michael Williams, third and three. Franklin needs a negative play or a turnover or a stop. They need to get that ball back. This is where Wade is so, so dangerous because you'll set up to pass and you'll forget about him and he'll find a lane and he'll take off and burn you for 30 or 40 yards. Third down and three now. Well, there you go. Wade will take it himself and this time get up close oh. to the 40 yard line, but Franklin closes the gate on him and he is short of the first down. I would be shocked if Coach Coleman does not go for this. I mean, when you have someone like <laughs> Wade could do a, you know, wildcat, right? Snap it and go. So we're going to have a stop here just to see, I, you know, either we're not standing at the correct spot, Michael Weaves, but it looks like he's a whole yard short. Exactly. But, but they, they're talking about bringing, here they come, the sticks will come out. Man. And I don't, I don't think this is going to work out for the Spartans. Uh, we're going to get a good close view here. Ooh, and wow. it is about yeah. two yeah. inches short. Oh, a little closer than I thought, but yeah, it was closer than I thought. I didn't think they had it, but I didn't think it was that close. Yeah, I, listen, you got a guy like uh, Destin Wade back there. There's, this is a no-brainer, right? Exactly. So you think absolutely Coach Coleman's going to go for this. Uh, Fourth uh, and one. Can, listen, can the Rebels hold right here? No, no, the Admirals have a chance to hold. Admirals hold. <laughs> Sorry. But this is a no-brainer right here. This is a straight lean, 6'3", six, 6'4". Uh, but it looks like the penalty may offset everything that just happened. I think we, we might have a procedure call here. We have a false start, so maybe that makes things easier on Coach Coleman as that false start penalty will back them up five yards. And now he might rethink this and kick it away. Franklin thinks he's going to do that, and he does do that. So here comes the punt unit. So kind of a, call that a big mistake there. That flinch yeah. on the um, on the false start. <clears throat> but you see that quite often in high school football. 22, I believe, is our receiver for uh -oh. the Owls. And uh -oh. the ball is off the side of the kick of the foot. And yep. this one will fall into a pile of people there at the 36-yard line. How about that? And so Franklin with a big break here. Punt was partially blocked. I was looking at the receiver for Franklin and the Admiral defense able to come through and get a hand on the punt. And so nice field position for Franklin as they have the ball first and 10 at the Spartan 36. Well, the snap is good. You see right here coming through the middle. It looked like 42 right there. Orton is going to get a piece of it. And so you talked about it, the Rebels, great starting field position. <laughs> the Admirals. Oh, there you go. Bryce Sparks again <laughs> uh, on that right side. And he will have a nice gain on first down, up close to that first down marker, but not quite as it brings up second down. 7.35 to go here in the first half. 5A. Spartans versus the 6A Franklin Admirals tonight. Not a region game, but a big county rivalry here. That give inside to number seven, yeah, Grayson, Grayson Bruce. Bruce. And mm -hmm. Bruce able to rumble his way inside the 15-yard line before it looked like the entire Spartan def defense jumped on his back and wrestled him to the ground. Yeah, Grayson Bruce, definitely a uh, change of pace guy. He had Sparks, the speedy guy, Orton. Now Bruce is going to uh, try it again. Franklin really quick up to the line, and this time Bruce not so much as he crosses the 15 inside. They think they'll mark it about the 12-yard line, so maybe a pickup of a couple. Second 
Well, let's see if the Rebels, uh, pff, Admirals. <laughs> uh, admirals, 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 Admirals. Stick with the uh, stick with the run, which has kind of worked out for him this series. Are they going to throw it up top here? Here's Bevan into that right corner. He got his man. Touchdown, Franklin. Oh, oh just out of bounds for the intended receiver. Thought he had that one. Yep, that was repass number three. As he had it in the corner of the end zone, we'll see Bevan just waiting for. Oh, uh, he had the. Uh, Plenty of space, pretty good throw. One, mm. just couldn't get that toe tap down, Michael Williams. Was that repass or was that? That was repass, number three, right? I think it was, I thought it was Grayson Bruce there, number seven. No, so, no. no we're, not gonna, we're not gonna argue over that one. Uh, you got that one, I'll call it. You got it. <laughs> Third down and nine this time, as our old eyes try to deceive us up here. That. Yep, that's Gardner, the tight end. Carson Garner, the senior, on the reception and makes it up to the seven yard line. This is going to be, wow. Okay, so I thought Coach Donnie Webb was gonna go for it here. Looks like he's gonna be trot the field goal team out. So Coach Webb. Uh, let me tell you something, Michael Williams. This is on the left hash for a right footed kicker. This is a tough kick, especially when you're inside the 10 yard line. So you're talking about spotting at the 19. 29 yard, bad angle, and straight and true. Yeah, there we go. I, you don't listen to me. Don't <laughs> listen to me. Good job. AJ Elliott, the 10th grader for the Admirals. Gives Franklin a point closer. Seven to six now our new score. 5.37 to go here in the second quarter. Well, just in case you were, uh, the listeners have been with us for a minute or two. Uh, we were talking about Super Bowl losses. Yeah, the Buffalo Bills, uh, 0 and 4, 0 and 4. One more though, right? Huh? Vikings, Bills, and uh, well, you, how many how many attempts are we talking about? <laughs> I mean, I, there's never, a lot of zero and one people, right? Right. To never win one. All right, well, that's a that's a long list, including the uh, our Tennessee Titans. <laughs> so, unfortunately, you had to put them in that category as well, but. Uh, exciting to know that uh, NFL back. Listen, I, I, why we got a break here? Let's, I mean, let's talk about this, Michael Weaves. The Titans do not kick off Monday until 9, 10 p.m. Central time. How many? I, I've been in bed. I've been in bed for two hours yeah. at that point. Yeah. I was going to say we're, we're going to have a lot of uh, late notes. Maybe who's the? Uh, and you have a. Um, you do a Facebook show on them, correct? Well, I can't divulge that information. I can't uh, divulge but, uh, that information. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> but I do. Uh, Coach, uh, our boss, Coach Creed, will get on to us about that. So keep that hush hush. I, I've, I've not paid the promotional sponsorship. <laughs> but we do have quite a good one here, seven to six. Uh, you know, I saw a stat the other day, Michael Williams. I think yesterday was the only day that w, WNBA. NBA, NHL, um, college, uh, pro football, um, and Major League Baseball were all played on the same day. Really? First time in history. How many darn? I mean, you think about it, September, some of those sports are done, right? Exactly. So. We're getting into NBA preseason, and right now they're in uh, <laughs> the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So King and Kerouac. And I'm sure Brandon King's back there as well. Got the uh, toes about the five yard line as Franklin boots oh it short. No. And I think the Admirals may have taken off a little too soon. Something happened. Delay a game? That, that's the only reason the gentleman in the back would call it. He can't call the false start from the 10 yard okay, line. So he caught way, way on back there. Yeah, he called the delay a game. That's very unfortunate to have a delay a game from a <laughs> after you kick a field goal and get points, right? You want to trot on the field. It was a delay, so they'll have to back Franklin up. No, that's a Five huge yards, so this could. Huge mistake. This doesn't look like such a big deal, but a lot of times when 
seems like about 80, 90 percent of the time, the high school kick will make it into the end zone, and there's no 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 return. But this time, I mean, I think Summit's definitely too deep. <laughs> and so Franklin boots it on the ground, and this time I believe that is King. Brandon King will bring it up and finds a little bit of daylight and able to wrestle his way across the 35-yard line. So the Spartans in nice field position after the delay penalty as they'll take over first and 10 just beyond their own 35-yard line. 5.29 to go here in the half. Well, it's been very interesting, Michael Williams, that uh, Destin Wade has been very patient in the pocket, right? We saw him right in week one, and, you know, his first or second receivers covered up, and he took off. You know, I think we've only seen that one time tonight. We'll see it again here as the on the pitch, and this time outside to King, I believe, or no, that's Kerouac, number 20, Sam Kerouac. And, and he's bowled under about the... 35-yard line, so a loss on the play. Yeah, Taylor Spirito from his safety position just uh, just welcomed Kerouac to the game. You know, the interesting point of Taylor Spirito, number 15 right there, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, his brother Brandon also played at Franklin High School. He wore 15, but both of their idols is Tim Tebow. Big Florida Gator guys, and so that's why they wear 15. So second down and 11, this time outside, go, the give goes to number 20. That's Kerouac again. And he finds a little bit of breathing room on that left side, able for a positive gain up at about the 47. Taylor Spirito, one of my most favorite seventh graders of all time, back when I taught at Grassland Middle School. It's hard to believe he's a senior now. Well, Taylor Spirito, also the number one fan of the Williamson County TV's uh, Sports Connection show with um, Darren Joins and Tate Matthews. I mean, this guy is a huge fan of that show. Third down and five from the 43, and we've got a whistle that'll stop the action here. And we have another false start on the Spartans, so penalties adding up for both of these teams. You know, it's interesting after we've seen week one with the Spartans to now, um, you know, Trey Hunter played a lot of running back during that game, uh, as well as Caleb Jolly. We have not haven't we've seen, seen Trey as a runner tonight, no, have we? No, but Caleb Jolly's been a uh, wide receiver for uh, most of the night, so it's been more of uh, Kerouac and uh, King in that position. But Hunter in that backfield a number of times tonight for that Spartan defense. Quickly to the line. And again. Wow. Timeout. Timeout, Michael Williams. As Coach Coleman, it looks like he'll have a call timeout. Not super happy with his troops right now. Talked about this Summit team. They went to the state title game last year, lost to Knox Central, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Knox Central, Paul? Uh. Knox Web, Knox Central? Knox, yes, something. <laughs> <laughs> something East Tennessee, right? So Coach Coleman takes over this program a few years back. It, as most starter programs up, start, some at one of the younger high, one of the um, newer high schools, I should say, in the county. Starts off like high schools do with football. A lot of young people, a lot of uh, not such great organization probably as they just get out of the gates, but Coach Coleman comes in a few years back. And oh. I believe Coach Coleman has an overall record. I wrote this down. Get your glasses on. <laughs> it's getting dark up here. I believe he's got a record over his, his tenure now, 42 and 21. <clears throat> and a lot of those losses were early on. Yeah, a lot of those were early on. So Summit making quite the name for it for itself down here in the southern part of the county. They've beaten Independence now. Sorry, Independence fans, but they've beaten the Independence uh, Eagles now two years in a row in what had been a back and forth series. Call that the Battle of 840. No, they don't. Call that the Border Battle. Sorry, Battle of 840 is Fairview and Page. So a lot of success for the Spartans. They, again. Oh, it's picked off. This one picked wow. off by number 21. John Dippold.
That's Isaiah Domingo, Michael Williams. 21, Isaiah Domingo. Sorry, looking at the wrong roster again. That Isaiah happens. Domingo. Here we go. Destin Wade knows where he's going, I think, right out of the chute. Gets a little blitz from the rep, uh, from the Admirals, and wow. Rolls through Caleb Jolly's hand right in Domingo. And the Rebels, I, <laughs> the Admirals are in business. Comedy of errors tonight. Yeah, wow. So Wade now with two interceptions on the game. And now the Admirals in business at, their own, at the Spartan 39-yard line. Bevins to give inside to Sparks, and Sparks will be bowled under. Again, Trey Hunter, I believe. Well, that's Caleb Jolly, Caleb number two. Caleb Jolly, yeah. number two. Sorry about that. So he's, he's playing a little receiver and a little uh, linebacker, it looks like. And that, would, that time the Spartans did a nice job stringing out Sparks where he couldn't cut up field. And now puts Franklin in a tough second and 13 situation. So loss of three on third down, ticking inside three minutes to go here in the half. Evan again, the give inside. That's Rain, uh, Ashton Orton. When he, it was even when he was in middle school, uh, Michael Williams, uh, I, I kept calling him Randy Orton, uh, you know, the professional <laughs> the wrestler. wrestler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if I accidentally call Ashton Orton Randy Orton, it's, it's because for three years, he was uh, Randy Orton. He was Randy Orton to me. So, so. <laughs> ball spotted at the 35-yard line. Now we will, you and I will probably get players wrong, or I will, the rest of the night, calling them admirals and rebels. Yeah. But there is no questioning our knowledge of championship wrestling. Absolutely not. So again, again, to give inside to Orton one more time, number 42. And ball is spotted at the 32-yard line. So a positive gain. Yep. Going to be fourth and. Uh, Short here, maybe about a long three. So Coach Donnie Webb looks like he'll roll the bones with 1.56 to go. And try to make it on this fourth down and three try. Franklin down by a point, seven to six. As we tick away toward the last 90 seconds of this first half. Crowd comes to life. That give inside a new ball carrier. Oh, wow, that that's number huge. 33, DJ yeah. Durham. DJ Durham. DJ, the senior this year. That's hard to believe, too. Absolutely. And DJ, he will pick up the first down. Wow. Great run. Good job by the Franklin off offensive line there to uh, get the push. That was a huge first down. It's funny, DJ just uh, tried it off after making the first down. Coach uh, Webb said, right, get back out there, buddy. I was driving down Hillsborough Road, and I looked up, and I looked, at, I saw this, what looked like a, an action figure running down the road. And I looked over, and it was it was DJ running down the road. <laughs> that guy. Got his motor all the, all the time on. Uh-oh. Bevin. Bevin in trouble now. Pocket looking, collapses. Rolling to his left, still in trouble. And this time he throws it away, and that will be okay. Yeah, that will be okay. He's been called a couple of times tonight for intentional grounding, but that time got to pass the line of scrimmage and a receiver was in the area. So no flags this time. Stops the clock at 54 seconds to play. And, and the Admirals have uh, all three timeouts. So it, 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 uh, hopefully they have better, better clock management than, um, <laughs> listen, I watched MTSU and um, Army. Was it was it Army or Navy the other, the other night? And I, think it was a, I think it was Army, wasn't it? And they, yeah, it was Army. And they had the ball down on their end with all three timeouts and never had used one and came up with zero points. Bevan again. Get out of In trouble. This time he'll take off. He's got a lot of daylight in front of him. One man to beat, and he's down to the five-yard line. Well, that play only took 13 seconds. So big first down. And Franklin now with the ball spotted at about the six yard line. They get up quickly to the line to give that time inside. Number seven is Grayson Bruce. And we'll have a timeout, I believe, as the Admirals will call a timeout, stopping the clock. 32 seconds, 32.6 to be precise. Well, Michael Williams, hey, listen, here's an unfortunate incident. We're, we're streaming live on YouTube right here. 
I get text all the time for something that me or you said, right? And they're tr trying to correct us. Uh, let me mention that the, the sports that were played all in the same day, apparently I left out NHL. I felt like I said NHL. I thought you said that. Uh, but uh, after a couple of uh, messages from a, a good friend, uh, <laughs> now this guy just had, a, just had a newborn, so he's probably on lack of sleep. He's really probably not paying a whole lot of attention to what I'm saying, but uh, <laughs> NHL as well. Now, down in, down in the truck, Lance, our, uh, our fearless, fearless leader, leader. He, uh, he gave me the list of NFL teams that have yet to win a Super Bowl. Bengals, Bills, Browns, Cardinals, Chargers, Falcons, Jaguars, Lions, Panthers, Texans, Titans, and Vikings. The, uh, the Browns, Jaguars, Lions, and Texans have never reached the Super Bowl. Ah. So there you go. Thank you, Lance. I still don't think either one of us win the steak dinner. No, no, not at all. Second down and three for the Admirals. Can they punch one over here? 32 seconds remaining. Bevan lofts it to the end zone. Pass is caught, but it's way out of bounds. Yeah, that's Carson repass again. They ran that exact same play earlier where repass had, didn't have enough uh, room to work with. And that second time right there, same situation. Just couldn't get uh, one foot down in time. Third and three. You know, you have a chance right here where you could run or throw it right here, and you still have uh, timeout to use, so. 28 Maybe. seconds remaining, third down and three, or third and goal, rather. Yeah. We'll call it that. And again, we'll have, I believe this is gonna be a timeout from the Admirals. So Coach Webb, didn't care for what he saw. He wants to change things up. Calls a timeout. Again, 28 seconds remaining here in the half. Franklin knocking on the door down here at Summit. Saw this game last year at Franklin High School. Summit comes away with a two touchdown win. 28 to 14, I believe, was last year's score. Yep. So Franklin well, we're looking, looking for a little touch of revenge, perhaps. We are inching closer to approximately about 400 people watching us right now, Michael Williams. Thank you very much. A including uh, some uh, friends of the show, friends of the <laughs> friends of the. Uh, How many of them are uh, teacher friends of yours? Well, you know, <laughs> I guess they have my <laughs> since they have my cell phone number. Uh, they're they're uh, they're reaching out, saying, "Hey, we're listening to you." So, uh, Michelle Park, here's to you. Thank I you for Miss Michelle Park. Thank you for, for all both, you both of her boys. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks for all you do, and a great. Tremendous supporter of the newly named Franklin Admirals. So third down and goal again. Oh, wow. This, this time, is a direct snap. Bevan will take it, and does he cross the goal line? He does, so touchdown Franklin. As Bevan keeps it, calls his own number, and rumbles in from three yards away on that right side, and Franklin will take the lead here. Well, listen, with 22 seconds remaining in the half. Listen, Michael Williams, I got to correct you because uh, I know the I know the mom personally. That was actually Carson Gardner, Gardner. <laughs> who took the direct snap. They, Bevan was. <laughs> I thought he was over. I thought he was uh, offset a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And so the the direct snap goes to Garner. So my mistake on that. Sorry, Carson's mom. So Elliot on for the PAT and knocks it through, and the Franklin Admirals now with a 13 to seven advantage over the host Summit Spartans. We'll see it right here. Direct snap, Gardner follows, I believe that's DJ Durham, hits the corner, leans in, and the Admirals take the lead, 13 seven. You know, if you don't enunciate the Admirals, then people think, oh, they, they they don't know, right? It's, Listen, uh, it's, I, it's getting it's getting easier, but it's yeah. still kind of here, here's how I know that unusual. it was usual. Here's how I knew that it was going to be tricky tonight. Uh, I listened to uh, uh, J Jay Johnson, the athletic director for the Franklin Admirals. Uh, they did a live stream uh, last week for their game, and he was having trouble as a former Rebel, right? Yep. So this, uh, it, uh, so I know that you know. If he was having trouble with it, I should get a free pass. You should get a free pass <laughs> for at least a handful each, right? That's exactly right. We get a number of mulligans on uh, 
on the Admirals and Rebels tonight. So 22 seconds, 22.2 remaining here in the first half as King and Kerouac tow it up at about the five yard line. Franklin just taking the lead 13 to seven. Admirals again coming into this game with a one and two record. Spartans spotless this year at three and oh. Franklin would love to hand these host Spartans their first loss of the year. Quick pop-up kick will be taken short and dropped. 17. Aiden Bird able to collect the ball. 20 seconds remaining now. So again, Destin Wade in the backfield. Uh, yeah, it only takes one play. <laughs> we saw him a couple of weeks ago and it was um, just a masterpiece. The work he did, he put that team on his shoulders, responsible for six touchdowns. This time the give inside is to Kerouac, number 20, and he will fall down at the 20 yard line. And it looks like Coach Coleman is uh, decided, be, to, yeah, decided to. That'll be enough. They'll call off the dogs, and that will be the end of the first quarter. So Franklin will go into the locker room up 13 to 7 as we end the first half here at Summit High School. And we will be back after halftime for the WCTV Game of the Week. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you on the other side for the third quarter. Back to the WCTV Game of the Week here at Summit High School where you see the halftime score. Franklin leads Summit 13-7. And we, as we get set to kick off second half action, Michael Williams alongside Paul Brees. Paul, the Spartans a little sketchy coming out in that first half offensively. and Had that big touchdown and uh, hadn't been able to answer since. Franklin yeah. on the board now 13-7. to seven. Yeah, early on, Michael Williams, uh, Destin Wade just drove it down the field, scored, and since then it's just been kind of a stalemate. And that's the de uh, a defensive struggle that uh, – Coach Donnie Webb from Franklin uh, loves to see. Well, Adam Bird covering up the squib kick from the Admirals, as Paul and I have been up here trying to bite our tongues between Admirals and Rebels all night long, trying to get it right. It's Franklin renaming themselves after many, many years as the Franklin Rebels, going back, going to the Franklin Admirals this year. So first and 10 from the 27-yard line, Destin Wade, the big time quarterback that we've been talking about. A couple of interceptions in that first half. He'll go ahead and call his own number. And this time scoot back to the left side, finds a little daylight and is able to advance the ball to about the 37 yard line. So nice pick up there on first down, close to a first down mark. Well, that's uh, something we did not see for much of the first half, except for that first touchdown drive of the Summit Spartans was that uh, Destin Wade a designed run, right? So good to see that uh, Coach Coleman decided to uh, kind of uh, loosen, the, loosen the leash a little bit. <laughs> so it is enough for a first down. First down and 10 from the Spartan 38. The quick give to number 42, that is Maddox Reed. And Reed will cross the 40 yard line. Small pickup on the play. First time we've heard his name called. Exactly. So it looks like Coach Coleman wanting to stick on the ground to begin this second second half. Well, after Wade threw the interception to kind of end the first half, I, seeing the run established is interesting. But here we go with flings it out this time and nearly picked off again as the ball was a little short. Taylor Spirto, the defensive back, able to get a left hand on it, knock it out of bounds. So bring up, brings up third down and eight. Uh, Taylor Spirto has got a nose for the football. You can see him at the safety position, just kind of baiting <laughs> Destin Wade to just throw it. <laughs> and the knockdown by Spirto puts the Spartans in a third and eight situation you talked about. Ball on the 40 yard line. Roll out by Wade. Looks to his middle, finds his receiver and is immediately hit. 
That is number nine, that's Zach Switzer. And he'll have enough for the first down. Nice rollout play as Switzer took a lick after he caught the ball, but it's enough for the first down. Advances the ball to the 49 yard line. Tremendous play, tremendous patience by Wade right there. And they'll whistle things up here as we were about to set. We, not all together clear. It. I think we might no. have a clock is yep. issue. 100%. Well, as we're waiting, uh, Michael Williams, the uh, the magic of um, social media, right? <laughs> uh, Brentwood is uh, ahead of Henry County, 14 to seven. Ravenwood was la at last check was losing to Pulaski Academy out of Arkansas, 16 to seven, nearing halftime. So, some interesting developments here in week four. Week four, I believe it is. Okay. I would say, I said it as, is it, that's a question. Please, <laughs> please help me. <laughs> I, I'm answering your question with a question. No. So, see, we'll see Ravenwood next week in the Battle of the Woods against their crosstown rival, Brentwood. First time we've seen them all year long. Second time that we've seen the Summit Spartans. And we'll see the Franklin Rebels again the early part of October here in about two or three weeks for the bat big battle of Franklin as they play Centennial. So still trying to work our clock situation out. 10.41 it reads on the scoreboard clock, just underway here in the third quarter. Summit again coming into this game with a record of three and zero. Oh. Franklin one and two. The Admirals with a big win over Siegel to to begin the year fell short against um, Riverdale. Riverdale the next week and then fell short against uh, Ravenwood last week. So they're looking to get back in the win column and even their season out at 500 with a win tonight against Summit. So they didn't get the, the clock started to begin the last play, I don't believe. So they'll run off 10 seconds and stop it at 10.29. So the Spartans will have it first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now we're back in business. Clock starts, and Wade will keep it this time. He'll find a little bit of breathing room on that left side. And the big junior will wrestle his way across the 45-yard line into Franklin territory. Close to a first down. Well, we saw a heavy dose of Sam Kerouac, the Summit Spartan running back in the first half. Now, <laughs> Destin Wade has uh, definitely been the uh, primary ball carrier here early on in the third quarter. Well, we saw him, like we said, I hate to keep belaboring the point, but we saw him three weeks ago, and he absolutely put his team on his back to come back and beat Indy just up the road. Well, he, he, you know, he, he went out actually a few plays, right, with the leg cramps. Exactly. So. I remember that now. Wade will roll to his right, fire to his right, finds his rope and receiver, breaks a tackle. Switzer. Zach Switzer yeah. again on the reception. So Switzer is into Franklin territory for another first down. Well, Switzer, the slot receiver, he's just running a short route right there. It's the safety Spirito playing a little deep on him, so just a little pitch and catch right there. And Switzer breaks a tackle and picks up the nice first down by the Spartans. So the ball spotted at the 38. Three receivers left. Spartans will run to the left. Again, this is Brandon King, and he's strung out along that 35-yard line, so no gain on the play. May have even may have even lost a yard. Talked about about a little bit about uh, Destin Wade, the quarterback. We've been mentioning his name all night long. He's got a twin brother, Keaton, 
who is sidelined tonight. He plays receiver. And <laughs> well, he's got a rolled up ankle, and he's out for another couple of weeks. Yeah, we'll see. I'm sure he, he, he can go in any position, right? <laughs> so you can't see the sideline there, but Keaton, I believe, is number seven down there. If yeah. If we pull back and we get a shot of the, uh, the Spartan bench. Well, a little hold right there on the Spartans. Had that quick toss out there. Uh, Ten-yard penalty from the spot, so first and 23. What do you got in your playbook for this? <laughs> a Destin Wade run? Yep. That's exactly what they'll do. Wade, he'll take off on that right side, find some daylight on that right side. One man to beat, cuts it back inside, makes two people miss, and Destin Wade all the way for the touchdown. That's what that young man can do. Wow, 45 yards. That's the way. We didn't see a whole lot of that in the first half. They went <laughs> immediately in the second half and said, okay, Destin, here we go. And sure enough, the Spartans have a chance to go on top with the extra point. So the 45-yard score and Summit uh -oh. has the ball blocked as the holder has to pull it back out. Wow. And Franklin bowls him under, so now <laughs> yes. we have a tie ball game. Man, oh 13 man. 13 to 13. <laughs> Coach <laughs> Coleman has got to be <laughs> livid. Oh. But what a run by Destin Wade. My goodness, 45 yards on the score. That's exactly what he is capable of. We'll see it right here from the Basically the 46, so it's going to be a 46. It is a key kickout block right there. Fullback fills right there, gets the edge block, and then it's uh, all Destin Wade, Michael Williams. I mean, here Taylor Spirito right here, going to give it a shot. Well, zoop, and a little one more DJ Durham. No thanks. And here comes one last try. Gacka, and Gacka does the right thing, but he just ran out of real estate. He'd already scored trying to go for the uh, legs and um, 46 yards, a cloud of dust. Destin Wade, <laughs> touch those Spartans. But we gotta, you know, reiterate the whole missed extra point deal. That just, you know, that just gives a little life into the Franklin Rebels. So Sparks has his heels at the five yard line for Franklin ready to receive the kick after the big Wade run. Franklin, I don't believe, has had a turnover tonight as the Spartans have thrown a couple of interceptions. So Elliott set to kick it away for Summit, our new score 13 up. And Sparks will return return this. He catches it about the seven yard line and runs into a wall of folks right there just inside the 30. Well, Franklin will take over first and 10. Well, it'll be interesting to see as Franklin comes out here for the first offensive series in the second half, will they be the, the running team that we have seen of old or, or will, will they open it up with a pass here on first down? Both of these teams unable to find a rhythm offensively tonight, seemingly, although both have had their moments of brilliance. Yeah, I definitely thought we had an offensive shootout going after the first series by each team, but then definitely slowed down. So here comes the pass. Bevin across the middle, and the pass is complete to his receiver. Help me out. Connor, repass. Repass again. Number three. Repass able to cross midfield, and Franklin picks up the big first down. What is what a, yeah, I was going to say, what a tremendous uh, throw by Bevan. I mean, right on stride to repass. Didn't have to make an adjustment or anything. And, man, what a luxury Franklin has. Bevan, probably the most underrated quarterback uh, not, not that you've never heard of uh, in Williamson County right now. Bevan, again, trying to make a name for himself to give his outside. I wow, believe that that's guy. to Sparks. And Sparks Look out. takes it down the sideline. Foot race. 
to the end zone and Sparks will score. Holy mackerel, look at that. 48 yards out. Bryce Sparks takes it down the sideline and Franklin, just like that, goes back on top, 19 to 13. So a couple of big haymakers thrown by both squads to open this second half. Bryce Sparks, what a run. Man. The 11th grader down the sideline showed the Jets. Broke a couple of tackles right there at the line of scrimmage and was able to scoot down that sideline for another big score for the Admirals. Oh, nice. Elliott's kick is straight and true, and again, he hits that, whatever that pole is right out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time tonight he's hit it, so he's well, we'll see definitely it. got a nice target. See there. right here, just a simple handoff. The sparks. He, here comes the uh, safety to come up. All he has to do is make the tackle. One, two, three. Spartans miss, and a foot race between him and Caleb Jolly. And Sparks just ekes him out to the finish for the score. Breaks the tape there at the end. And you know, speaking of, you know, Bryce Sparks was back in the day at Grassland Middle School, track track superstar. Funny story. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, Michael Williams, but uh, Bryce Sparks was a, a hurdler, a hurdler. So uh, the story has been told that uh, he would used to come out and, um, you know, jump over the trash can as kind of a warm-up. Uh, <laughs> let's just say the uh, <laughs> uh, first time he attempted it did not go very, very well. That uh, was, uh, yeah. Now Bryce Sparks today probably could jump over two trash cans. But in middle school, uh, you know, hey, what do you do, I, right? I remember that story very well. What do you do? So how about this? It's just like the way it started. We go an offensive touchdown, touchdown to start this. Now are we going to go back to, uh, are we going to keep the foot on the uh, gas pedal here? Well, both teams able to land a couple of big punches here to start the second half. Wade with a big touchdown run to open things up. Franklin answers with a touchdown run of their own. So again, Kerouac and King set to receive. And Franklin has been doing this all night with the squib. And again, having a bit of an issue <coughs> covering the ball up. Yeah, Aiden Bird. So good, good job by him just They've to be alert. they been picking on him tonight. They've been asking him to play soccer goalie a little bit here, and he's been having to knock down those squib kicks by Franklin. But the Spartans will take over first down and 10 at their own 27, 752 showing on the scoreboard clock here at Summit High School. Wade again calls oh his own my. number, lots of Here we go in the middle, another foot race. No and way. Wade one more time, he'll take it the distance. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Two in a row, I'll take it myself, thank you very much. As Destin Wade, all the way from the 27 yard line on his own side of the field, that's the second time tonight and Destin Wade is ringing up the rushing yardage as Franklin does not have an answer as the big quarterback runs out of the backfield. All important extra point, right? After the miss. Elliott on to kick oh, again. This wow. time, everything is straight and true. Well, we're gonna probably take a look at this replay here as we see, it's, <laughs> hey, there's nothing fancy about it, right? But the nice trap block right there, middle linebacker got out of position, and Destin Wade, all he's got to do is just outrun Taylor Spirito, gets the stiff arm, and there he goes. He knows that he is on the way for a 73-yard touchdown run. Bryce Sparks, what you can do, I can do better, Destin Wade. So we're knotted again at 27.39 to go. Now the offenses for both teams have come to life. 
And Paul, this one has turned into whoever has the ball last was likely to take this one. Well, <laughs> I we saw that at Independence, right? <laughs> With uh, Dustin Wade. So Wade now with two rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown. Well, we have about 430 people watching. Hey, text your friends. We're going to have a wild finish here, folks. Get them on board. Ashton Norton now <laughs> with his heels at the five-yard line set to receive. Well, listen. The Elliott kick. I would be shocked if that's Ashton Norton back there receiving deep. I thought it's I number bet 42. It, how about 22? Is it 40, 42 or 22? I think it's Mitch Lanick. I guess you're right. Yeah. I thought I saw a four there. Ashton Norton, he's a wrestler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Lanick will take the ball right at his own goal line. Finds a little daylight, able, able to scoot outside, and it'll be taken down right at the 30-yard line. I hope our audience will forgive my old eyes. Can't tell fours from twos anymore. Oh, uh, I just uh, purchased recently, uh, Michael Williams, uh, some of those uh, blue blue glasses are, uh, that uh, supposedly help out with, you know, looking at screens, you know, all day. <laughs> right. <laughs> they try to, you know, easy. There's less strain on your eyes, right? Which is what we do as teachers anymore. Yeah. Stare at computer screens. Correct. All day. Correct. So. Uh, there's not, not that there's anything wrong with that. No, but there's definitely a difference as I look at the, uh, a, a computer screen on my phone now. Uh, definitely does not seem to uh, hurt my eyes. We might have to have a conversation after the ball game tonight. 719 to go. <laughs> 2020, our score. Evan again, the give inside. Oh, Bryce Sparks again. Sparks wrestled down just shy of the 35-yard line. Well, that home run uh, punch by Sparks has definitely provided him some uh, <laughs> confidence right there. A little spin move and uh, second and four, right? So it's like second and four, ball spotted right at the 35-yard line. We take under seven minutes to go here in the third. Evan again, wow, organizing his troops. Yeah, overloading the weak side. Oh, repass going to. Nothing doing, and Sparks again. He will be caught from behind and again ridden down at the 35-yard line. So brings up third down and four. So no gain on the play. That was a nice play by 40, Jesse Brimer right there for the Spartan defense. So everybody stacked up right here as the Spartan loads, loads the box. Bevan goes outside again. It looks like Sparks on the reception coming out of the backfield, and he'll make the catch. Looks like he's got enough for the first down, and he does have enough for the first down as they move the sticks and mark the ball at the 40-yard line. First down, Admirals. And this is more of the uh, tempo that Donnie Webb would prefer, more of a chain possession. You know, he, he does not want to <laughs> give uh, Destin Wade the ball back uh, as much here in the second half if he could avoid it. Didn't think Spart the Spartans were going to cover up that slot receiver, but they, they oh. managed to do that big lick. Heard it all the way up here. Yeah, that was, I think that was Caleb Jolly that came through here to finish that up, number two. That was 42, Orton. Orton stopped just shy of the 45-yard line, pick up a four yards on the play. A positive yardage though, Michael Williams, and the clock is still moving, so uh, Coach Donnie Webb for the, for the Admirals is definitely okay with this.
They give inside. Well, thought it was still Orton, but this time it goes. Oh, Bevin wow. goes outside to repass and just out of his reach as the pass was a yeah. bit too high for him. Uh, probably one of the few passes that's kind of gotten away from Bevin. Uh, repass did have to jump a little bit. Maybe still catchable, who knows? Uh, but, you know, I guess in practice when Bevin's been throwing it right on the money <laughs> or, or during the game that you don't have to exert too much energy, uh, that time repass had to do a little adjustment but just couldn't reel it in. So back to big third down and six now. Can the Spartans get off the field? As Bevin and company check the sidelines and have a little mix up in the communication and they will have to call timeout. So 4.59 to play here in the third, knotted at 20. And Franklin has to call timeout. Well, I mean, you know, if you're gonna use one, at least use one in a situation that's important. I mean, sometimes they, you get call, you call timeouts when they're, you know, because of substitutions or anything like that. But this time, hey, you got a big decision to make, right? All right, we got some updates while we're waiting. Uh, Ravenwood just uh, took an onside kick. Uh, onside kick touchdown, <laughs> return <laughs> touchdown. So Ravenwood scores. It's 22-14 Pulaski still after the extra point. Um, so the, and uh, down the road at Brentwood High School, Brentwood High leads Henry County 28 to 10. So now we're back to live action. Out of the timeout. The Admiral's now three, third down and six. Bevan looking right, firing right, and that one just out of the outstretched arms of receiver. And the ball falls incomplete, and the Admirals will have to punt it away. Yeah, I think this is a no-brainer for Coach Webb. I mean, we're still tied. Granted, Dustin Wade has had <laughs> two long runs to uh, open the second half, but, you know, you'd hate to give it the ball back, but if you don't convert, you give them the short field, and it's just a no-no. Oh, my. So it looks like somebody may have taken off a little too soon. Do we have a false start? Yeah, I think that's the only reason. I believe we do, and that'll back Franklin up. So again, the Spartans set for decent field position. And with their inability to stop those big, long Destin Wade runs, that's not a good position to be in right now. The Admirals, Franklin, hosting Independence next week. McGavick and then the big battle of Franklin against Centennial on October the 2nd. Kick is away, nobody back, well, nobody there to field it for, oh my. takes a Spartan bounce and will fall dead at the 41 yard line. What is Donnie Webb saying right now to his guys about Destin Wade? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know what you can say, right? Uh, <laughs> Stop him, tackle that guy. Yeah. Very dangerous, you know, it's just gonna be interesting to see if uh, Coach Brian Coleman for Summit decides to let Destin Wade continue to do uh, quarterback keepers right here, or just kind of start mixing things up here um, and let him throw it a little bit. It seemed like he, they got in desperation mode and Destin decided to keep it. So Wade this time to give to, I wanna say that's King right yep. there, and that's not a very large, not a pickup at all. As a matter of fact, may have even lost a couple of yards. 10, King, and got player down. Looks we got our first leg cramp of the night. Probably not the last. That typically so, happens at this point of the game. That's uh, looks like 71, Clay Crowder. 
and the junior lineman after making the tackle. Those are not, uh, no fun, no fun. Nope. <laughs> they will knock you down and not a thing in the world you can do about it but shake it out and stretch that sucker out and hope it doesn't nope. come back. Hey, right. the, the, the sideline that has the best pickle juice is <laughs> probably gonna be the winner. I think that's what Parker said last week. So Summit will talk about their schedule. This is this is one of three county games they'll play this year. They've got Overton next week, Northwest the week after that, and then at Page High School. Close out the year with Franklin County, Shelbyville, and last game of the year is October the 30th against Lincoln County. Wade in trouble. This time, we'll find a little lane on that right side and slung out of bounds. And again, these Spartan parents looking for a flag, saying that was a little too much. And I thought I may have even seen a face mask right there, if we can if we see this on the replay. But I don't have a yellow flag in my pocket. They can't throw it from here, right? And they will hurry up. They will blow it up right here is Wade again. He'll take it up the middle, crosses the 50-yard line. He'll have enough for the first down, still on his feet. And we'll move the sticks, and that will stop the clock at 4.02 to go. So here's the issue with Wade. Wade has had these two huge runs. I believe one was for 73 yards. The second one didn't get a count on, but it was around 60-something. You got to spy him coming out of the backfield, but he's such a fantastic thrower as well. Yeah. And Are so they, that's what you've got to watch out for. So let's, yeah, let's see if they're loose, loosening up for the pass here. You've got that double whammy. All right, Wade there we again. go. Goes to his left side this wow. time. A little short to his receiver. Uh, that may have been his first pass attempt in the second half. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that's. I mean, our our. our our spotter and our statistician, I don't, maybe they can confirm that or not. Oh wait, we don't have one. We don't have, <laughs> <laughs> we are, we, we act as spotter and statistician. So a gain of a yard on the short pickup on the pass play. Wait again. The, Give to, I believe that was King. Yeah. Brandon King makes it back up to the line of scrimmage. 77 for the rep, uh, for the Admiral, excuse me, on the tackle. Um, that's uh, Amsler, the senior. So third down and nine. Ball at the 46, Wade spins, looking, firing, and ball falls incomplete. And Johnny intended, on the spot. Intended for Brady, Brady Pierce, <laughs> didn't and, quite come up with it, and, and so the Spartans will punt it away. Taylor Spirito, right on the money. You know, I, Michael Williams, I just noticed this, but in that defensive possession, Amsler and Fisher Anderson uh, two starting offensive linemen d did play defensive line that time, so maybe uh, Coach Donnie Webb decided, hey, we're going to try to, you know, clog up that line a little bit and don't give Destin Wade too many free open looks. So good substitution by Coach uh, Webb. Kick is away. It's a beauty, too. And uh -oh. that one will fall dead inside oh my. the five-yard line. So a beautiful kick. Trying to get a number on our kicker there. 32, 32 is our number. 32. John Sloan. John Sloan with a lovely kick. Those, the ball dies inside of the third, uh, inside the five yard line. 2.02 remaining here in the third quarter. Game knotted at 20 again. Not a region game tonight, but well, you definitely feel the uh, the intensity has started to pick up a little bit, but right? But it really doesn't matter. <laughs> because when you get two squads inside the county, 
Franklin backed up deep. We've got a flag. Wow. And that's it's probably going to be a false start. It is a false start. And so, in fact, Franklin back up to closer <laughs> to their own goal yeah. line. Doesn't hurt them a whole lot, but definitely uh, uh, gets the heart pumping a little more if you're Connor Bevin <laughs> as you're, uh, you know, taking that snap from the end zone. So keep your eye on number four, Trey Hunter and Caleb Jolly, two Summit Spartan defenders that can wreak havoc. Hunter's been in the backfield a number and of times And another tonight. flag. And still somebody jumps. And now we'll back them up close, even closer to their own goal line. That is huge. Not the way you want to start. Still have not taken a snap. Two consecutive <laughs> penalties in this offensive series. So the, the nose of the ball just kissing the goal line there. Sparks, he'll take it up on that right side and runs into the scrum. Very small gain to find a little bit of breathing room. Not much. Well, the Rebels doing a little hurry up of their own. I normally do not do this. So they call it a pickup of one, second down and nine. Bevan checks his signals to the sideline and positions his guys here. And ball is given outside. I believe that sparks again, and he's wrestled down at the five yard line. Yeah, number 34 right there for the Spartans. Nice job. Let's see if I get a. So Franklin able to find a shade of daylight as they've gotten out their own goal line and have advanced the ball to the five yard line. Third down and seven. We tick under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Jacob Turner on the play. I think we may have had some movement. Bevin in big trouble in the end zone and has to chunk it. Trey Hunter. And Hunter again, yeah. wreaking havoc, as they say. No flags on the field, so I must have gotten the ball past the line of scrimmage. So they're not going to get him for intentional grounding. But Franklin will have to kick out of the shadow of their own goal post here. Well, let's see if Summit here brings the house and tries to get a uh, block on this. Or do they set up a return on the short side of the field? Always a special coach's team nightmare if you're the punting, <laughs> punting team, right? Switzer with his toes on the 30-yard line. So the Spartans, unless this is just a boomer, it's a high kick. Switzer will let it go. It takes a sideways bounce, and now a Spartan bounce. And it finally rolls dead at about the 37. So. Summit takes over first and 10, call it the 38 yard line. 28 seconds to go here in the third. They whistle it up. Spartans with 28 seconds to work with. Wade will call his own number and this time Franklin doesn't let him get free. 71 right there. That's going to be uh, Clay Crowder, who went out earlier with leg cramps. Came back, nice play. Because they have run that, they ran that play, Summit did, two straight times for a touchdown. So good job by Crowder to clog it up. And did not get him on the jump right there. Very interesting. And. So that'll bring us to the end of the third. Score nodded at 20 between Franklin and Summit. We'll switch sides of the field and play one more. Well, we're inching toward that 500. People watching us live, Michael Williams. Let me tell you something, call your friends, FaceTime them, tweet, <laughs> text them, tweet them. This is gonna be a fantastic finish 20 to 20 here. Turn on the ball game. 
The last quarter is underway. Yeah, as my wife would say, nothing really happens in the first three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> she, because I'm always trying to rush home for something to watch the game. She goes, don't worry about it. Nothing's really going to happen until the fourth quarter. She's a wise lady. And uh, unfortunately, uh, she's, that sometimes does come true. <laughs> but we still got to watch the whole thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and now with uh, like a DVR, sometimes it's actually better to watch it if you could, if you could oh. prevent people from telling you the score. It's Either. just it's just heaven. But yeah, to fast forward through and the commercials. Go through the commercials. Oh. Ugh, nothing like it. So hey, how about this? Centennial Cougars looking to pick up win number one this year. Lead 14 to 0 with 430 left in the third. Over Siegel. Ravenwood and Pulaski are in a battle. 29-22 with three minutes left in the third. And um Independence leads Blackman 28-0. I tell you what, after watching Independence and how they've progressed, I would not want to play Independence late in the season because mm -hmm. quarterback Jackson Campbell is He's the real deal. The real deal for sure. So we probably saw one of the best ball games we'll see all year against Summit and Independence about three weeks ago. I keep harping on that. I know I do, but hopefully you were able to join us on the WCTV game of the week because that was a classic. Here we go, last quarter. Second down and nine. King on the give and runs into a stout Admiral defense. Or, Key, or Wade, rather, on the keeper, excuse me. And that's Crowder again. 71 having an outstanding game. Crowder has, uh, he knows Franklin's been burned on a couple of long Wade runs, so kind of closing the door on the big junior quarterback here. Third down and nine, a little loss on the play. Wade will spin away from trouble, looking, firing deep, and the ball falls just short. His intended receiver, Austin Harvey, unable to collect it, and so well, the Spartans you, have to kick it away. The reason why that ball was underthrown, Michael Williams, was the pressure by linebacker Michael, Michael Robertson, number 43 off the edge, uh, put Destin Wade into a backpedaling throwing situation right off the back foot. So that's the reason why it was short. Tremendous job by Dr. Defense, Donnie Webb right there to uh, get a change of possession here. Sloan again, he killed one inside oh. the five yard line. This one will sail out of bounds about the, where's the referee gonna stop? Oh, what in the world? <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> well, he went down he's, there where the ball was out of bounds. He's and toying with us. So he's, he's gonna mark it at the 17. So the Frank, about said it again, Franklin Admirals will take over first and 10 from their own 17. After trading punches in the third quarter, a couple of long touchdown runs by both teams, both offenses have kind of fallen a bit anemic here over the last few possessions. Bevin this time rolls to his left, fires to his left, caught his catch is made. Yep. Couldn't tell tell me out, Paul. Mitch Lanick, Lanick 22. again. Goes high in the air. Pull that one down. Close to a first down. Pass complete to 22, Lincoln. Atlantic. Tackle by number two, Caleb Jolly. Second and ten from the two. So a nice gain on first down. Second down two for Bevin and company. They give inside Sparks to Sparks one more time, and he's had crosses the 35-yard line plenty for the first down. Uh-oh. Sparks came up hobbling a little bit, Michael and Williams. That's not a good a, sign. So Got a Spartan player out there hobbling a bit, too. So Sparks, he looks like he'll head off 
get a little attention to that that injury. Franklin spreads two receivers wide to the right side. Keep the pail back in to run. And Orton. Ashton Orton. Ashton Orton carries close to the 45. That's a nice pickup. Very good ball control right here. The clock's going to run. They're gaining big chunk of char uh, yards in first down. Keeping it second and inside two and three is a, is a coach's dream. So second down three, another give inside. This time nothing yeah. doing is the Spartans snip out the running play. That's a tough call right there for someone like Orton to run to the outside like that. Uh, not his forte. And tremendous job by the Spartans defense right there to stretch it out and no gain. So third and four now, interesting situation. I mean, you're gonna have to try something. I don't know if uh, Coach Webb's got a screen pass in the in the back pocket of this playbook here, but I would think the Spartans are coming and going to bring the pressure. Sparks back in the backfield, and they'll pitch it to him on that left side. Finds a little bit of daylight, and he dances out of bounds. Does he have the first down is the question. Well, that's a tremendous play if they did get it. I don't know if they did or not. Nope. They're going to be short by a yard. Do they play the field position game here, or does Coach Webb roll the dice and he's going to? All right, I'm going to go with the quarter, the armchair quarterback. Franklin's going to go hard count and then call timeout. <laughs> oh no, they went for it, and I don't know. I don't know, Michael Williams. And Bevin calls his own number. Dives into the pile. Don't know that he got that from here. Oh, he does have it. How about that? Referee will point it forward and they'll move the sticks. And Franklin, Donnie Webb rolling the dice right there. So Franklin, fresh set of downs. 8-17 to go here in the ball game. And counting. Knotted up at 20. Bevin again checks his sideline. Sparks again in the backfield. They'll give it to him, Sparks. Finds a little bit of daylight and brought down by number 11, Gavin Wells. Uh-oh. Sparks again coming up a little, a little slow. Well, he did have a nice pickup on first down, so Pickup of six, they'll call it second down and four. Clock continues to tick away here. Well, no, it does. Yeah, it does. That give is to number 33, finds a little crease. DJ Durham. Big DJ Durham, the senior. And he is close to the 30-yard line, another first down well, for the Admirals. It just seems that everybody they put back there has, is having success, whether it's Bryce Sparks, Ashton Norton, DJ Durham, uh, Grayson Bruce. It's a, um, a who's who of running back stalemates back there. Well, you got to think that after all of these running plays, this Spartan defense might be a little winded. Well, and that's Franklin's strength, right, the front five and uh, – they're going to ride those guys here for the last 651. Durham again finds a little daylight on the left side and wrestles his way close to the 25 yard line. And we may not see Bevan throw another pass this series. <laughs> I mean, uh, basically, Spirito and Lanik down here on the <laughs> near side on the screen right here 
They're just decoys. <laughs> they're spread out wide right. Durham again in the backfield. And they're using all of the play clock. Again, Durham on the carry. And he has another nice gain up to the 20 yard line and, and another first down. Tremendous. Let's see, here comes running back by committee. Grayson Bruce now in the game, number seven. So uh, Connor Bevan looks over at him and says, hey, you ready? Because <laughs> it's likely is, coming to you. It, it's, it, it's probably 100% coming to you, buddy. Now they're just trying to figure out what side to run it on, left or right. Bruce moves to the right side. Takes the ball up the gut, and he'll have a pickup of maybe three or four yards. Man, the, uh, the O-line, currently the MVP of this uh, offensive series. Wow. The big guys. They got some big bodies out there. Well, uh, one of them just came up limping. I have to uh, 66, maybe the center. Big Mason Jones out there, number 73, six. They've got him listed at six foot six, 280 pounds. So he's a he's a moose. I wouldn't want to have to lean up against him all game long. That give takes it to the outside again. That is Grayson Bruce, and shoved out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Franklin Admiral football at its finest right here. And let's give a quick plug to uh, Carson Repass over there on the on the far side with a block to give Grayson Bruce the uh, the first down. The, give it up for the wide receivers doing the extra mile. First and goal for the Admirals now. Oh my. High snap, that given to Durham, and Durham will be swallowed up as he makes it back to the line of scrimmage, and a flag comes in late. Well, let me tell you, Michael Williams, I saw the whole thing. Franklin, offensive lineman, 64, had a good clean block, and number 11 for the Spartans, took exception to it, gave him a late shove right in front of the referee. So if this is on the Spartans, which I think it is, we'll see right here, the gentleman in the white hat is gonna clarify things up here, but uh, 64, uh, Toby Holtz, the senior, tremendous block. And that is on the Spartans, yep, that's what I thought. That's gonna be on number 11, um, Gavin Wells. Did not like being, <laughs> Take it down the field very far. You know, when you're when you're wearing number 11, you don't like to see the sixes and the 70s, 60s and 70s guys running right at you, right? <laughs> well, the penalty puts Franklin that much closer. They are on the four yard line. And this is a clock situation now where they're just gonna run this down to maybe about five seconds on the play clock. Man. Head snap, and this time Bevan has to fall on it. So exactly what you don't want to have happen. Bevin has the ball on it, loses a ton of ground back to the 15. Clock continues to tick. We're under four minutes to go in the ball game. Well, that is the second consecutive high snap that we've seen from the Admirals. So Franklin in a tough, tough situation here. They're just gonna try to keep it in the middle of the field, I would ben think. Then he'll roll out to his right, looking for a receiver. Ball is caught, oh, it's oh touchdown. my goodness. He called that a touchdown. That is to Grayson Bruce. That's Carson Repass. That's Carson Repass. My fault. <laughs> I knew I was going to get that wrong. I could have sworn that was a number seven down there. Number three, Repass, finds the back of the end zone. That's twice. That's the third time tonight that Bevin's gone to the back of the end zone. Repass has stepped out two times. Finally, they connected, and the Rebels jump in front. Well, 20, fantastic 20. patience shown there by Bevin as he was under pressure. 
and able to find repass in the corner of the end zone and the Admirals. <laughs> oh my. Take the touchdown advantage here, 27 to 20. 320 to go in the ball game. This is big for the Spartans now. We'll see right here, Bevan has gone to this play before, has outthrown repass twice, where his foot has been out of the end zone. This time hangs it up in the air, and this is when your favorite receiver finally comes down with it. Touchdown, Rebels. And <laughs> they're still. <laughs> oh, Admirals, touchdown, Admirals. Doggone it. I'm sitting here thinking, man. Just, I, I, I just stayed with Franklin all night long. Yeah. <clears throat> So Franklin takes the 27 to 20 lead, 3.20 to go in the ball game. Franklin looking for a little bit of revenge, maybe remembering last year's game. Summit came into Franklin and beat them 28 to 14. Yep. And looking to hand Summit their first loss of the year. We've seen Summit in this position before. We saw them three weeks ago against Indy. They did not have the lead the entire game, save the last 11 seconds of the ball game when Wade was able to dash in for a quarterback keeper. But their backs are against the wall here, down by a touchdown. Well, we've seen the Admirals special teams play tonight, um, you know, where A.J. Elliott, the place kicker, has kind of gone different spots in the kickoff. They've rarely gone deep. So it'll be interesting to see how they play this. If they have really avoided kicking away from uh, Kerouac and uh, King, the deep men, But you do not want to give a Destin Wade <laughs> too much time on the clock. Unfortunately, 320 seems like a, a lifetime. That's a lifetime for that young man. Yeah. So Elliott sets up at the 40. King Kerouac with their heels on the five-yard line. They've been squibbing kicks tonight. They've been popping them straight up. But they haven't given the Spartans any sort of opportunity for a return. They do it again. And this time, the Ebeck will I believe that is, I want to say that's King right there. Crosses the 30-yard line. So King, he's slow to get up. I think he got the wind knocked out of him, Michael Williams. He's Timeout having, <laughs> I can immediately tell that he, he got, maybe landed, took one to the mid-drift. Maybe landed on the football. Yeah. Or? So they're just trying to relax him a little bit, tell him to breathe. Um, but man, let's talk about this situation right here. I mean, it has been a king up very quickly, thank goodness. 3.13 to go. We got Destin Wade, plenty of time. Okay, now King is out of the game for at least one play. And that's, you know, well, never mind, he's back in the game. Well, I was gonna say, he's gotta be out of the game. <laughs> they stopped, yeah, I was gonna say they stopped the game for him, so. <laughs> Franklin needs to keep an eye on Destin Wade. This is where he can be quite dangerous. But no Trey Hunter right on offense. He'll call his own number again and take off to the left side and shoved out of bounds as he crosses the 30, about three yards shy of a first down. Clock will stop with the, yeah, that's, as he runs out of bounds, 3.08 to go. Yeah, that seven yard carry took basically five seconds. <laughs> Not such bad news for the Spartans. Second down and three. Looking to draw even with Franklin, who just took the lead. Uh -oh. Wade in trouble again, uh -oh. trying to get out of trouble and will be slung down. There is no way. With the sack and the flag comes in and that is disaster for the Spartans. Fantastic play. I think they're going to pick this flag up, Michael Williams. They do pick up the flag. And the, the coaching staff up here on the press box with us for Franklin are uh, not too happy. As 
14 for the Spartans. So third and short. So they call it an incomplete pass. Incomplete oh my pass. goodness. Yes. I thought that was disaster for the Spartans. Second, second down or third down and three. Here's Wade again, and this time spun down at the 40. Won't have nearly enough for the first down as Franklin's defense has come to life here late in the game. And Michael Robertson, 43, nice job again. Fourth and short and definitely a hurry up situation for the Spartans. It's definitely not, yeah, I was gonna say. Wait again, this time again. Oh, he's gonna be short. That Franklin defense comes to life and stops him short of the first down. And Franklin back in business as Wade unable to capitalize on the on the fourth down play, stopped short and the ball will go over on downs. Well, not only that, Destin Wade got tackled out of his shoe and the momentum just couldn't carry him over the first down marker. As you said, the Rebels take over 228 left in this contest and now it is a definitely a Franklin, Franklin Admiral situation here where they're just going to run that ball between that offensive line. The Spartans need a big play from the defense here. To, they still have all three timeouts remaining. So can Franklin hand the Spartans their first loss of the year? That give to DJ Durham, and Durham crosses the 40. A nice pickup on first down and we'll stop the clock as the Spartans will call a timeout. Franklin looking to draw even on the year at two and two. And the Summit Spartans now at three and oh with their backs against the wall. Can Franklin hang on to hand them their first loss of the year? Again, not a region game. The Spartans at 5A, Franklin at 6A. Of course, that could change next year with the, yeah. the growth down here. If they get some more students at Spring Hill, they could easily jump, or at Spring Hill. Get some more students here at Summit, they could easily jump to 6A. So that would mean four 6A, five 6A squads in Williamson County? Yes. Well, here, you know, here's the funny thing. Well, we'll talk about it after this play. I, I, I have a feeling that someone's going to call another timeout. <laughs> we'll have time. Durham again has been the main ball carrier, and he'll get the call again because he takes off not a whole lot of finesse there as DJ carries it up to the 30-yard line. So all this is taking place with starting running back Bryce Sparks. Uh, slowed by possibly, you know, an injury. So, uh, man, running back by committee, this is huge. Takes a lot of pressure off Bevan and the receivers. So now it becomes an issue with, you know, avoid a big, a big mistake here, right? Durham picks up the first down. We tick under two minutes to play in the ball game. That big O line, why not? Just go right ahead as Durham again powers his way this time to the 25 yard line. Well, taking a look at that big Mason Jones out there, the big 12th grader. He's a tank. 6'6, 280. Yeah. Well, and keep your eye on 74 Fisher Anderson, Michael Williams. That guy is the one that's got uh, some offers on the table already as a uh, soft. Is that right? Is he a sophomore? 74. Fisher Anderson, they've got him listed as a junior. They've junior, got him okay. listed at 6'7", 275. So here, here's what I was going to bring up, Michael Williams. Franklin Admiral's football schedule next week. Hey, Independence High School next week. Franklin Independence. Then they had a scheduled game against a uh, Metro Davidson County School, McGavick. That game got canceled. Is that that's what they just said? So the, so Franklin picks up <clears throat> Pope John Paul. 
Oh, really? Second, which is a very tough Division uh, two. Uh, is that at that's Coach gonna John? Be at, no, that's at Franklin. That will be at Franklin. Yeah, Coach Webb told me that, uh, man, he was trying to reach out to anybody and everybody, and uh, everybody wanted them to come there, but he convinced Pope John Paul uh, to travel to Franklin. So second down, five, 140 remaining in the ball game. Franklin in the driver's seat here. And again, Durham will get the call. Wow. Keeping the clock running. How about that? Crosses the 30 yard line. First down. And he'll have enough for the first down. I mean, just when Summit feels like they have a stop, they call a timeout, try to get him in a third and long situation. The, the, the front five, right? The guys up front making a difference. Absolutely, ball spotted just inside the 20 yard line. I would suspect they all go back to the huddle and say same thing here. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna trick you. Yeah, you know what? we're not gonna draw up anything special. He, he, same thing on two. The offensive line can probably point to the guys that they're gonna block right now and say, all right, I'm blocking you, get ready. I can't imagine Coach Donnie Webb would do anything different than run Durham again and again and again. And that's exactly what he'll do. Durham, this time muscles his way to the 10 yard line. The big senior running back. And Franklin again will call what I believe will be yep. its last time out. That's right. We are under 50 seconds to play, so the Spartans here. Life support. Exactly. So second down and one, Franklin, all they have to do is so they can first take, down, well, and they can sit on it. Listen, they can take a knee. If they want to, victory formation, you got it. Like some of the Summit fans realizing that, making their way to the parking lot right now. Uh, Independence, a winner tonight over Blackman, a tough River uh, Rutherford County foe, 28-7. Centennial. Up 24-7. Oh, actually, check that. Put it in the wind column, Mike Nicely Williams. Nicely done. Way to go, Centennial Cougars, getting their first win. Uh, Ravenwood currently behind with six minutes left, Bunch this one up is exactly what we'll do. Yep. Bevan comes out, second down, 149 seconds remaining. He'll take the knee. He's going to have to do it probably one more time, and that'll be a big victory for Donnie Webb and the Franklin Admirals. How about that? Got it right. Exactly. Took Good us job. Four, four quarters. <laughs> <laughs> to not say the uh, other mascot, but next week, Michael Williams, <laughs> Brentwood, Ravenwood. That'll are WC, be huge. WCCB. You and uh, you and Parker will have that one next week. They're giving me the uh, the Friday night off, but I will join you again the following week. Well, help our help our YouTube stream uh, ratings out. Absolutely, Thank you, man. You know I will. So the Franklin Rebels. That will do it, and they are excited. As we tick under five seconds to go, three, two, and one. And Franklin, the Admirals, even the record at two and two with a big, big win over the previously undefeated Summit Spartans. So your final score, there you see it on the screen, Franklin 27, Summit 20. For everybody here at the WCTV Game of the Week, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody have a great weekend. Paul and Parker will see you next Friday for the Battle of the Woods, Brentwood and Ravenwood. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. I'm Michael Williams for Paul Brees and all of our WCT folks. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday night.